As data engineer, we all prefer to have best practices around us so we can achieve more with less. When we talk about best practices for loading data into Snowflake, we ask following questions to ourselves. How we can load data in a very cost effective manner? Load more data set in shorter duration with less error or no error and produce superior quality of data without any data loss like truncation errors. Lastly, when it comes to data engineering as a domain, how to enable the auditability so debugging is possible and how to compliance to the governance and regulations requirement if applicable. So this chapter will deep dive into many common engineering best practices when it comes to data loading into Snowflake and how to achieve these goals. Welcome back to my channel Data Engineering Simplified and to this how to load data into Snowflake series for true data professionals like you. Though this episode is more informative in nature, however, we will have some quick hands-on exercise and if you like to practice them alongside, you must have SnowSQL CLI installed in your local machine to load the data to your internal stages. You can download all the data files and script used in this episode from my website. Link is given below in the description section. In this chapter 11, we will explore and understand the best practices starting with named and unnamed stages and how they are applied followed by validation process for large file, file size limit and when to apply them and many more common and best practices that will help you to improve your data loading development effort and bring quite a lot of operational efficiencies. There are a lot of exciting features to be learned about data loading into Snowflake and this playlist has covered many of them and along with the practical use cases. I hope they are helping you in your day-to-day -day development activities. Feel free to subscribe to this channel so you would be notified when a new episode is published. If you are signing up for Snowflake first time, you would not be able to access the legacy web UI and the recent changes by Snowflake will expect us to use Snowsight more and more. By January 2023, Legacy Web UI will no longer be available. So if you have a CSV file of size 25 MB or less, you don't have to waste time by loading them via internal or external stages using put command. You can use Snowsight CSV loader feature and load them and speed up your development activities. Let's see how we can use it, how different it is from our chapter one where we used Legacy Web UI to load the CSV files. So I am in my Snowsight web UI and I'm going to load a customer data into a customer table. Let's create a customer table. My customer table is created successfully. This has total 15 columns. Let's see if I have any data set available or not. The table is empty. Now I'm going to load the data through a data loader feature from Snowsight. I am clicking on this help and support function. And here I will find a feature called upload CSV. When I click on that, a new pop-up screen comes up and I'm going to select a CSV file and it clearly says the file size limit is 25 MB. Let me select a file. I have selected a file which has total 10K rows. I have only two options. The first says use the first row as a header and continue to load the data even if there is an error. We have seen these options in our previous episodes. I am choosing a compute virtual warehouse clicking on next. It took a while because before it loads the data, it first encrypts the data. Now it is asking to either create a new database or it allowed me to choose a database from the list. I have selected my database and schema. Finally, I am selecting my table called customer CSV. Now clicking on a next. Now it says the data partially loaded and out of 10,000, two rows, 10,000 rows are loaded successfully. Let's click on query data. It opens up a new worksheet where select star from customer CSV limit 10 SQL script is already written. Let's select that and run a query. And the data looks good. Moving to the previous tab. Let me go to the customer CSV table. I can preview the data here and it says total 10 K rows. 481 KB of data size. Let's click on copy history. Now, if you pay attention, it says 
upload data loader followed by a hash key and it says the data is loaded partially so if any data which is loaded through data loader you would be able to recognize it by using this file name so for development activities if you have to load a lot of csv files you don't need to create any file format and you don't need to put the file into an internal stages you can simply use this data loader feature and speed up your development activities so when you or your team needs to load csv files which is less than 25 mb in size and fields are separated using comma character isno site data loader can be useful tool and it can save a lot of time and bring development efficiencies for all other file types and size use copy command via internal or external stages which we have covered in chapter 2 next we will try to understand how copy command identifies the file format when specified or not specified if we look at the approach 1 where copy command is explicitly using a file format called customer_csv_ff and it is very clear that this file format will be used to parse the csv data approach 2 uses inline file format and this approach is called unnamed file format approach it also works the same way by considering many default parameters which sometimes does not work in your favor so if possible avoid this approach in the third approach the form clause is omitted and the stage location is also missing so copy command will automatically look for internal table stage for any csv file and will try to load it this is also bit confusing approach and should be avoided all these approaches will produce similar result for standard file format like csv having comma as a field separator however in approach 2 and approach 3 the default setting will be executed without our knowledge and as a best practice we should not follow approach 2 and approach 3 in our production environment it's good to follow approach 1 in production environment which is explicitly telling what exactly it is doing and it is easy to maintain and debug any error if occurs let's quickly try all these three approaches in our snow site and see how does it function so first i will truncate my customer table the table is empty and i am going to run the put command from my snow sql three different csv files in these files are available in the git location which you can download so first file is 03_1 second is 03_2 and third is 03_3 and let's see how do they look like so the customer id is 125 for second file 11 to 15 and for third file it is 21 to 25 and we are going to follow three different approaches to load this data set here i am in my snow sql cli console and i am placing this file called 03 underscore one underscore customer five rows CSV file under this user stage location. It got loaded successfully, and let's go back to Snow site. So I can see one CSV file is available. I am going to create this file format called customer underscore CSV underscore FF, and first we'll follow the approach one. So my file format is created. So in approach one, we are using this file format called customer CSV file format and loading this data set. And let me run this copy command. No error seen. All the five rows got loaded. Let's review the data. I can see from customer ID one to customer ID five looks good. Now I will go and upload my second customer file. And this time I am going to use unnamed file format approach. And let's see how does it work. data is loaded i can see my 03_2 customer file is available i am going to load this second customer file where i am not specifying any file format and the file format value is type equals to csv let's see what happens it says customer pk is not recognized if you scroll down you would see since the first line is a header line customer pk it should be an int value okay so to fix it i have to specify skip header equals to 1 okay and let me rerun that so this is my revised inline file format where skip header equals to 1 so it will skip first line from the data file this time my data got loaded without any error 
let's see the result i can see from 1 to 5 11 to 15 now in the third approach i am going to place the file inside the customer table stage location and will run this copy command without giving any stage location and i will have inline file format before that let me truncate the table if you look into this put command i have given percentage customer csv it means that it will place the data into internal table stage let me run this command so this particular file with 21 to 25 is loaded looks good now i am going to run this command and if you see i do not have any stage location neither i am specifying named file format it should run so it has picked 03 underscore 3 and let's see how the data looks like okay so from 21 to 25 all the data loaded good so we have followed multiple approaches one with a data loader followed by named and unnamed stages and looking at this screen you can identify whether it has gone from the data loader or from the internal stages or from the table stage the next best practice is use of validation mode while running copy command before loading large data set we had a dedicated chapter around it and we have learned the power of validation mode and how it saves tons of development time and debugging effort so when you have a large data set especially when it is in a compressed format it is better to use validation mode to bring development efficiencies this not only save time but lot of warehouse compute credit let's talk about purge and force options in a file format as a common practice if you want the files to be removed after successful loading into the snowflake table you can use purge option in the copy command and if you want the same set of files to be reloaded the force option should be set to true use this option very very carefully if the purge operation fails for any reason no error is returned by snowflake so it is recommended that use the list command to stage the files periodically and manually remove successfully loaded files if any exist if you have a lot of data files coming to your stage location be it internal or external it will make the file listing process time consuming and that will impact your data loading speed so it is better to either use purge command or use remove command to delete the successfully loaded files so your overall data loading happens faster into the snowflake tables so next best practice or a common practice is to use the limit file size parameter in your copy command there are use cases where you would like to load only limited amount of data for a given file or a collection of file for example 10 mb data set per day or not more than that let's say you are running a log analytics platform where you would limit the log analysis by 10 mb file per day or per load in such cases you can use this size limit approach once the 10 mb log data set is loaded the copy command will not process any further data this is one of the cost saving approach and if you want to control the cost in your development environment or an environment where you are doing some experimentation you can use this approach so let's see how does it work so here i am in my snow site again let's create a table called customer large my table is created successfully i am creating a file format which is going to process csv file and compression is jzip it is created successfully now we already processed some file during chapter 5 let's see them how does it look like so here i have more than 100 mb of data file available now i am going to run this copy command which will load the data into the customer large table it will pick all the files from this chapter 5 customer csv location and this is a file format it is going to use on any error it will continue it will use the force equals to true and then i am using this size limit equals to 50 mb it means even though i have 100 mb of data side it will stop after 50 mb and let's run the command and see the behavior let me rerun even though i had a lot of files it managed to load only three files not all of them let's see the query profile so if you look it has returned 40 mb of file and it actually scanned only 64 mb of file 
So other files are not loaded here. Let's go back to the data tab. So if you pay attention, the moment it has crossed 50 MB, it actually stopped loading the data. So this is how in certain use cases, you can control the data loading by running a copy command, which has a file size limit. So this is one of the common practice or best practice, which you can follow for specific use cases and save your storage cost as well as data loading compute cost. Let's talk about large single file versus small file guidelines or best practices. If you have a lot of large files having 500 plus MB size, better split them into smaller files and moreover under different partition folders if applicable. This approach will improve the overall performance as the Snowflake encrypts the file before even loading it into a stage location. And if the file size is very large, it takes longer time to encrypt and process them. Along with that, moving large file over the network from the external stages is also very expensive. So let's look into this example where the left side is not partitioned and right side is partitioned by month. At aggregated level, the data size is all same. The data which is partitioned will be processed faster compared to the data which is not partitioned. You would not see the difference for a smaller data set. For the large data file, the difference is noticeable. Let's go to Snow site and try it out. Back in my Snow site web UI, I'm going to load a data set which is 500 MB plus uncompressed. And when I compress it with gzip command, it is close to 164 MB and the data is already loaded into this user stage. Let's see the data. So it is close to 164 MB of size and the name of the file is customer very big 530 MB CSV gzip. I'm going to create a table called customer v1 which will hold this data. The table is created. I'm going to create a file format. It is created successfully. So I'm going to run this copy command which will load the data into customer v1 table and load this entire large file. Let's see the performance. So it took 22 seconds to load the data. It partially loaded the file. So there are eight errors seen. So it loaded 3.6 million rows in 22 seconds, a one big large file. Let's see the query profile. It is scanned close to 160 MB of data set from internal stage and converted that 160 MB into compressed format of 98 MB. And again, if you have not seen how the compression works in Snowflake, I would request you to go and watch this video. So if you look into this profile, 47% time has been taken for initialization. Now let's load the partition data and see how does it look like. So same file has been chunked in a smaller file of 50 MB and they are also loaded into this location called large partition. I am running the list command to see how does it look like. So 160 MB data is split into 11 files. Now let's see whether a smaller file runs faster than that or not. I am going to create another table called customer v2. I am creating another file format. Only difference in the previous file format versus this file format is that I have removed the skip header because when I split the file, I did not add the header. Now this is a copy command which will use the pattern matching to load the multiple files and having v2 as a file format. Now before running this command, I would prefer to change my virtual warehouse. I don't want to use the caching. So my copy command is executing and it took 7.1 second. Okay, looks good and total 11 rows and it also had some issues. Okay. Let's go and see the query profile. So if you look into the query profile, it also scanned around 160 MB of data set and it has written exactly 96 MB of data set. And if you look into this, the total initialization period is just a 33% of six seconds. What it means that it took lesser time compared to the one single file. Let's go and see the copy history. So this is how my data looks like. So it has loaded total 11 files and 96.6 MB and 3.7 million rows. So there is a clear difference if you split the file into a smaller file and if you use the compression, your overall performance will be far, far better than one single file. 
if you have a lot of large file split them into a smaller file even if you split into the smaller file put it in a partition folder and use the compression for a faster data loading it will save a lot of time as well as compute cost next we will try to understand the file pattern versus exact file location in your copy command and does it make a difference if you look into this copy command we have used exact file location while running the copy command if you have to load one single file or a set of file and if you know the name of the file it is always recommended to use the exact file location however in some cases you have a lot of file and you use the regular expression using a pattern parameter this is slightly expensive than the exact file location so it is always preferred to use exact file location or a set of files instead of using a file pattern identifying and listing the file itself is a time consuming operation and if you want to optimize it go with exact file location there are many common good and best practices around data loading in snowflake to improvise the data loading speed and control the compute cost without compromising the data quality so in this video we have seen some of them like size of data file data file type file compression partition file name discovery using file patterns warehouse size purge and force options and there are many more advanced practices around data loading into snowflake using copy command if there is any specific practice you and your team is following in your snowflake data project that seriously enhances the data loading speed using copy command and bring development efficiencies lots of cost saving please share it with me and in this group we all want to learn from you as well before we proceed further I have a quick announcement. I have been adding simple and real life scenario based videos and playlist so we all can learn together. You don't need to buy any expensive courses. All my contents are freely available in this channel. My channel audience are really enjoying them. You can see their feedback. So continue to follow this space and if you think this channel content is helping you do me a favor by subscribing to this channel and yes don't forget to press the like button thank you for watching keep learning and keep growing